I'm getting a fairly rapid cycle time on this, just over 22 seconds, so that's over 120 an hour, which is not bad. Uh, the shot weight is relatively modest, just 7 cubic centimetres of nylon 6, and I'm injecting that at 60 cubic centimetres a second uh, with 1500 bar pressure, but I doubt it's actually getting that high, that's the pressure limit. Uh, 0.34 seconds on the injection time, so it's going in pretty quickly. Uh, I am packing it out with 2000 bar of pressure though for 4 seconds, so that's trying to prevent getting any short shots. Uh, it seems to be working okay. Clamp force is pretty modest, it's running happily on 20 tonnes, I suspect I could go a bit lower than that. Uh, and temperature wise, no big deal, about 230 to 250 for uh, nylon 6. So, uh, carry on, how much? More time have I got? Well, I've nearly done it. An hour and a half, it reckons, and then I'll finish this this batch of them. So, soldier on and complete the job. Well, I've got a nice bag full of these, and they've come out pretty well. I've got another three bags full as well, because I've done 2,000 of them over the course of the last week or so. Uh, a little bit of a stock overrun, so I'll de-sprue those in due course. But uh, this is actually... What it's all about, it's some sort of electrical connector, which uh, was sent to me by Peter Moore of Chockbox fame, and uh, for some reason these things didn't come with any sort of cord grip on them, so I was asked to produce a, a mould to do some prototypes for these, which I did a, a little while ago now, uh, and he's finally got back in touch and said he wants 2,000 of them, so the basic idea was uh, a little hinged jobby like this that just fits in and catches behind screw holes so it can't come out and uh, obviously it grips the cable drops in place and then when you screw the thing together you get the other screw in a bit of look that will bite the cable sufficiently well but it doesn't slide out tighten that up tighten that up and <coughs> oops yeah, well, that's pretty tight, so it serves its purpose. Uh, the mould itself, nothing too complicated. It's really one of those jobs where if you'd only wanted a, a few of these, you could probably have got away with 3D printing them, but if you want a few thousand, it's a bit of a different ball game and obviously doesn't really justify spending thousands of pounds on a proper production mould. I suspect if these things go to market and they need hundreds of thousands of them, then a full production mould will be in the offing, but uh, this is basically all the mould is, just a couple of plates of aluminium, it's done quite a bit of work now, but and there's a little bit of slack in there, but uh, uh, I'm not getting too much of a mismatch on, on the two halves, the, the runner is the only bit really that you need to concern about, and there's not a lot there, it's pretty good, it's uh, uh, lined up fairly well, but uh, to get away with these, uh, I did have to do a bit of lateral thinking because normally for something like this you would probably spark erode this into either, either side of the mould and, and obviously cut the, uh, the core grips on the other half but uh, to get away with it I ended up just using a couple of aluminium bars bolted onto a little frame at the end to act as an insert and then I just cross cut these uh, to create the pips that I needed to make the, uh, the uh, all important cord grips so that just fits on that side there and aligns with the bottom and then the other side goes on the top, obviously. Uh, the only other thing I had to worry about was how to get these things out of the mould once I'd injected it in, because it needs to be a reasonably stiff material to make sure that the teeth are strong enough to bite the cord grip, but at the same time it needs to be flexible enough for the things to actually 
fold over so I ended up using uh, nylon 6 which I figured would be strong enough on the hinge and also uh, stiff enough to, to bite into the cable. If I'd gone for a softer material, a polyurethane perhaps, then the hinge would have been a little bit more flexible but the teeth would also have been a bit more flexible and so they might not have held the cable. So I went with a nylon 6 and the big issue I had was how do I get them out of the mould because normally uh, these gates at the top here which I've been cropping off with a knife they would normally be really really small but if I'd done that then when I take the runner out of the mould which I can do by just pushing it through from the sprue on the back then there's a fair chance that it would have broken off at those gates and then it would have left uh, the, uh, the cord grip embedded in this side of the mould with nothing really to get a purchase on to get the thing out so to get around that problem I basically cut these core pins a little bit longer than necessary and I extended them right the way up into the cord grip, it's into the, uh, the runner itself beyond the cord grip uh, and then cut these gates deliberately a little bit bigger so the idea was that as I free it from the top I can then lever it out using the pins and then just simply fold that over and release uh, and that worked pretty well, I was hitting a fairly fast cycle time, nothing went wrong it's all moulded okay so uh, another uh, fairly simple example of what you can do on a bit of home brew injection moulding uh, I think uh, the mould's good enough to do another couple of thousand of these if necessary but um, it's a good start and if it does take off then I'm sure they'll get a proper mould done which would churn these things out in an afternoon when it's taken me nearly a week to do but uh, anyway interesting little project and uh, I'm sure there'll be another one along very soon